Tonight we're going to look at Matthew 24, and we're going to look at verses 26, uh, 27, and 28. Uh, in one of my part of my message, I may refer again to verse 29, but that's really a new section because if you notice the words in verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, I've underlined that. So if you ain't know anything about the tribulation, you know, wait a minute, it's over with, it's coming to an end, it's coming to a halt. Then he describes the return of Christ. Amen? And that's the second part of the second coming. The first part is the rapture when he takes out his bride. Amen? And then at the end of the seven years, while we're up there in judgment seat of Christ, praise God, we're spending time with the Lord. Amen? Then we're coming back with him. Amen? And he, that's the second coming, that's the second advent. How about that? That's his revelation when he reveals himself. Every eye will see him. No matter where you live on planet Earth, Revelation 1-7 says, amen? Every eye will see Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter if you believe it or not, you're going to see him. Say, what's that bright light up there? Amen. It's Jesus coming. Praise God. Amen. But we're coming back with him because he's going to set up his kingdom. And I can't wait for that too. Amen. So verse 26, we're moving on from verse from the couple of verses before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Let's pray. Father, again, bless your word. Bless our time together. Um, speak to hearts, meet with needs, and we pray especially, Lord God, for those who uh, uh, don't know you, Lord. Father, we pray. Pray for folks that come to church here. Pray for folks that are watching, Lord God. You would touch their hearts. Lord God, if they don't know you, they don't have a personal relationship with you. Help them to understand what it means to be saved, Lord God. And Father, we pray for believers, Lord God. Strengthen us. Uh, Lord God, give us strength. Give us the peace that you promised that passes all understanding. If we just leave things with you, Lord. And God, help us tonight. Help us not to be so soon shaken, Lord God. Oh, God, we need your help. We need your strength tonight. And we do give you all the honor and glory. Now, Lord God, speak to hearts, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Before we get into that, I need to refer to 2 Thessalonians 2. Just a quick reminder to everybody. Amen. Just remember a couple of things we've, we've discussed for a long time, but especially not harp on it, but for a couple of years in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, amen, and we need to, we need to remind ourselves, you know, I'll, I'll just read one verse while you're finding 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I'm just going to read one verse for you too to remind you. The Bible says, for God hath not given us the spirit of peer, fear, but of power and love and a sound mind, amen? Is there fear here or what? Is there fear tonight? There's fear in the world, Amen. God says, what did he say? I love this. Fear. He didn't give you. Amen. He didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Boy, I'll tell you, that's what we need tonight. Boy, this world's, this, this world's really, really in a state of confusion. Amen. You spend time in the Word of God and get close to God, I'll tell you something. You'll have a sound mind. you have a sound mind. Amen. So go to that 2 Thessalonians 2 passage. So in the first book that Paul wrote to the, Thess the believers at Thessalonica, they got a little bit concerned. He had to straighten them out about this issue of the rapture and, um, and the, the coming of Christ, that first part of that, taking the bride of Christ out before God outpours his wrath upon this earth and um, for that seven-year period called Jacob's Trouble. And uh, so anyway, as we see in the second book that he wrote, these people were, look at verse uh, 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in what? Mind. Or be troubled, even as Jesus said, remember John 14, 1? Let not your heart be troubled. He said it a few times in that section of, of chapters, chapter 14, 15, and 16. Amen? It's, don't, don't, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. Okay, so is your heart troubled tonight? Amen? How's your mind? Are you full of fear? Amen? 
Are you shaken in mind? Is something shaking your mind right now and you're having some doubts about some things? Listen, you can trust in God's word. I can't tell you that you can trust in everything that you see on social media and news media, but I know this, you can trust what the Bible says. Every time, 10 out of 10 times. <laughs> and there's no retractions by God. How about that? Amen? There's no mistakes. We need to trust God. Amen? We need to interpret uh, current events in the light of the scriptures tonight. That's what we need to do. Look to the Bible. Look to the Word of God. Amen? And uh, so anyway, so let's get back to that passage here, and we're going to look at some other things here. So what, we, what we're doing here is this part of the tribulation that has just been mentioned, again, remember that God uh, preserves a remnant of the nation of Israel, those that believed and those that he protected in, in an area. It's going to be like another wilderness experience like they did way back in Old Testament. He's going to take care of them, feed them, and so forth. And what will happen is there's the armies of the world, the world, the east and the north, and some people identify them by different countries. It used to be Russia, Russia, you know, or this and that, or Soviet Union and all that. You know, that all broke up years ago. Amen? So sometimes you got to be careful when you assign names. Oh, I know for sure this one is Turkey and this one, yeah, whatever. Okay? I'll leave that to God. I, I, you know, we don't know for sure. We have ideas, and it's not something to be dogmatic about anyway, but they're going to gather. They're going to gather, and they want to destroy the, the, the people, the earthly people of God. Amen? And they're gathered also to fight against. So listen, when Christ comes back, amen, King Jesus is coming back, and he's going to get ready to set up his kingdom. You know what? We live in a world tonight, um, unfortunately, they don't know the God of the Bible. They got this imaginary God that they made up. It, it doesn't, it's not described in the Bible. A lot of people out there in the world, people that don't know Christ, people that don't know the Bible and what the Bible says about Jesus Christ. And anyway, this, this, this Bible tells us he's going to return. And it's not going to be a pretty sight. As a matter of fact, without going into a lot of detail about the time of the Armageddon, that great battle in Megiddo, the Valley of Megiddo. And so anyway, uh, he's going to take care of this. These people that have risen up, and listen, you, you can't win with God. Amen? You want to beat, you want to try to beat God tonight? I mean, you're, you're, you've lost. You, you've already lost. Amen? It's a given. Amen? He doesn't lose a battle. He doesn't. We lose battles here. Amen? We fail at times, but he doesn't lose any of them. And he's on the right side. And the problem with our world tonight is when they see the God that the Bible describes here, they say, what kind of God is that? But as I told you many times before, you've got to remember something so important. The people that were left in the tribulation are people that didn't want God to begin with. They rejected Jesus Christ. They did not receive salvation. They didn't want him at all. So he is just and right to do what he does because they rejected him. Amen. You know, you say, well, I don't believe in God. It doesn't matter if you believe in him or not. He's still going to do this. He's still going to do it. So way back, practically in the beginning of this pandemic thing, in March 2020, I preached a message, and I, have, I dragged out my notes from that time. The four suppers in the Bible. I don't know how many were here to hear that message, but I'm not going to go through all the details. The first was the Great Supper. You read about that in Luke 14, the invitation, eh? It's like an invitation of salvation, amen? And come to the marriage feast and all that. And that's what that one is. And the second supper that's mentioned in the Bible is what we call the Lord's Supper or the Lord's Table in 1 Corinthians 11, where it's one of the two ordinances of the local church. One is baptism after salvation. Baptism doesn't save you. It just makes you an obedient child of God. It's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It's a profession of your faith because I would never baptize somebody who didn't profess salvation. At least that's the order. The Bible says you get saved, then you're baptized. Amen? And then that's the second supper. So or the second supper is the Lord's Supper and just doing it in remembrance of Christ. What he did is we sing, I will sing of my Redeemer. Amen? That's what we should be singing, singing the praises of God. Amen? By the way, you say, I'm having a hard time with that, you know, pastor. Well, maybe you're feeling like the children of Israel in Babylon. The Bible says they hung up their harps. You ever read that over there? Amen? They hung up their harps. They said, oh, well, we don't want to sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Hey, no, we need to sing the songs of God in the strange land. This is a strange land we're living in. This world is not our home. We're just passing through. 
Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Amen? Listen, this is a strange land for you if you're saved. This is not your permanent residence. Amen? You're just a sojourner. You're not supposed to be a dweller in God's eyes. Amen? Let's not plant a root so deep. Amen? Let's not be like Lot's wife who had a hard time. She had to turn around. I don't want to leave that. I don't want to leave everything I had behind. Yeah, you, you, you turned into a pillar of salt. You didn't listen to the Lord. Shouldn't have turned around. God says one of the shortest verses in the New Testament outside of John eleven thirty five 35 is remember Lot's wife over there in the Gospel of Luke. How about that? Remember Lot's wife. Jesus said that. Remember Lot's wife. Do you know what the Lord is saying? Go back in the Old Testament. Read that. Think about it. Meditate on it. Remember Lot's wife. Amen. Boy, it said, listen, listen, there's nothing, there's nothing of any great value to, to, to God that's here other than the souls of men and women on this planet. How many times have I said that? The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 8. Amen. What shall a prophet a man if he gain the whole world lose his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for soul? The Lord Jesus said there's nothing of greater value than the soul of a person. People need Christ tonight. Amen. And uh, so, anyway, so there's the marriage, the Lord's Supper, Supper of Remembrance. There's that great supper in Luke 14, I've already mentioned. Then there's the marriage supper of the land. I kind of alluded to that. That's during the time we were taken out before the tribulation. It's not a point. We're not appointed to wrath. We're not part of the earthly physical people. Amen. We're a heavenly people. All those in Jesus Christ, Jew and Gentile, are no longer that distinction is not important to Jesus Christ, to God. He says, no, you're in Christ. You are a Christian now. Amen. We get caught up or taken up to be with the Lord and and then as a result of that, after that period of seven years, then we're coming back. And as I've showed you before and again, we'll see this again. We're going to have a nice, long marriage supper of the land. That's after the marriage, of course. You've got to have a marriage before you have a marriage supper or reception. Amen? That's what you have. Amen? It'll be a nice, long one. How about a thousand years? Well, that'll do. I think it'll do. Amen? You'll be able to eat food and not gain any weight. You won't have to worry about your blood sugars anymore. Amen, brother? Amen? <laughs> Amen. You don't have to worry about that stuff. My wife, I know she deals with that stuff. Amen. And other people don't have to worry about the salt over there. My brother Don or brother Gary. Amen. You don't have to worry about that stuff. Watch out for your high blood pressure. Amen. We can enjoy everything that's put on that table. Bless God for that. Amen. So that's the marriage supper of the land. And then he says, the fourth one is the supper of the great God. That's what this is all about. This is not a very pleasant thing to think about, but it is reality. It is reality. It's hard sometimes, like I said, for people to accept this. Amen? So what happens is this. We talk about the signs and wonders that will be happening, and they'll be very deceiving. People say, oh, that's, you know, lo, here is Christ. Oh, no, over here, and all this kind of stuff. Amen? And there's even some of that mentioned in verse 26, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he's in the desert. Uh, go not for it. Behold, he's in the secret chambers. Believe it not. No, no, wait a minute. He's coming. He's coming down from heaven with us. Amen? That's what it is. This is the end. This is the end towards the end of the tribulation there. Bless God for that. You know what? Unfortunately, look, keep your place there. Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. And that's that verse I just referred to. The Bible says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So this is not the rapture, because not every eye will see him in the rapture. This is at the end of the tribulation where he returns, and every eye of every person will see him return. Amen. All the unsaved on this planet Earth will see him. Everybody will see him. They won't need a cell phone. They won't need a, 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 a data on their phone. They won't need internet. They're going to see him. You won't need a TV. Every eye will see him. Amen. You, he, listen, God can do anything. People will say, what is that? What's going on here? Boy, I'll tell you, it's going to be a, a, such an event. Look at... Um, Let's see here, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, or 2 Thessalonians, I'm sorry, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. We were in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 a few moments ago. How about 2 Thessalonians chapter 1? I've mentioned this before. Again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, and look at verse 
Let's see here. Um, let's see, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Watch this. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, from the glory of his power. Oh boy, I'll tell you. You say, that's a terrible God. No, it isn't. It's a just God as I mentioned a few moments ago. That's a God that's equitable. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us, and I wrote this down, and where did I put it? Sometimes I put things down and I forget to mark them down. Yeah, here it is. Genesis 18, 25. Do you remember when God, uh, Abraham and God are bargaining about Sodom and Gomorrah? Remember that? And he starts, hey, how about, Lord, would you spare? Would you spare? He says, you know, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? He does do right. Every time. Man doesn't. Have you noticed that? Compare what man's doing with the Word of God. Compare what God has done and is doing. God always does right. Even though you say, I don't understand. Why, why did he do that? Well, the longer you're saved and the more you study the Bible, I guarantee you'll have more answers. Did I say you'll understand everything? This book is beyond anybody. There is so much in this book. This is a lifetime journey. I don't understand it all. Amen? There's people who have been saved 60, 70 years and still don't know it all. Amen? It's an amazing book. You can read it thousands of times and you still don't know it all. Amen? This is not just like picking up one of those novels or the number one bestseller at Indigo or, or, or you know, one of those bookstores or anything like that or chapters. No, this is the Bible. By the way, this is the best-selling book in the world, the Bible, the Bible. It is. Thank God for that. Amen? Uh, um, I like that. Someone did the acronym, Bible, Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. How about that? Amen? That's what you got right here. Basic Instructions Before Leaving Earth. Amen? Are you ready? You're saved tonight. Are you ready to meet him if he came back tonight? Are you ready for Christ? Are you ready for him? I hope so. I hope you're ready for him. Amen. You got some, you got some uh, confessing to do first and straight up some things. And you got to do some house cleaning, so to speak. Is your house in order, so to speak? Amen. Spiritually, do we have to deal, take care of some business? Listen, don't ever lay your head down on the pillow on each night as you finish this day without confessing and making sure God, God, try me. God, reveal to me. Lord, help me know. No, no. Lord, God, I want to know. Is there anything God revealed? And you've got to spend time in the Word for God to show you. Amen? You've got to spend time in the Word of God. That's what James talks about when he says this is like a mirror. You've got to look into the perfect law of liberty. Have you looked into it this week? How much time have you given the perfect law of liberty versus all the other stuff you look at? Amen? Does God get shortchanged? Amen. This is, this is his book. This is his words. I, I want, what, does God, what does God have to say? We got it right here. Everything you, you want, God wants you to know is in this book. It's six, six books. How about that? 66 books for us to look at. Amen. So he says, you know, there's going to be a time, and that time is at the end of the tribulation. Amen. It's going to be right at that end. There's going to be a battle of Armageddon. All the enemies of God and his people will be gathered, and he's going to wipe them all out. How? With fire. With fire. That's what he's going to do. And it's not going to be a pretty scene. Amen. All the enemies of God. People hate God, don't want God, don't believe in God, haven't trusted Christ as their Savior. But they didn't want him, even though they said they never believed him. I don't believe God exists, really doesn't matter if you think it or not. He does exist. You'll, you, there, there, and listen, everyone in hell is a believer now. Did you know that? You ever read Luke 16? Everyone in hell saying, send somebody to warn them about this place. I want my brother and my sister and my mom and my dad and my son and my daughter and my grandkids. I want my neighbors to know. I want my friends to know. Read Luke 16. Everyone in hell is a believer. They know. They know now. And God did send somebody to rise from the dead. His name is Jesus. <laughs> death, burial, burial, death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. He rose from the dead. You don't want to, I don't want to believe in him. I'll tell you, that's the foundation of our faith. 
Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, if the, if the resurrection of Christ didn't take place, our faith is in vain. Our works are in vain. Our labor's in vain. This is a waste of time. Let's sell the church and pack up and eat, drink, and be merry. But it is, it, it's not in vain. Praise God. It's not in vain. This book is true. Amen. We're not wasting our time. This is not a waste of our life. This is just not some little, well, we've got to make ourselves feel good for a service or two or something like that. No, this is our life. He is our life. Amen. For me to live is Christ, the Bible says. Amen. He's my life. He's everything to me. I like that old song we used to sing at the afterglows there. Amen. In the teen class back in the 70s. Man, I'll tell you, he is everything to me. Everything to me. Praise God. Here's another. Here's another place in the Bible. Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. Oh, boy. These are not pretty things. These are not pretty things. The last book in the Old Testament. You ever look at that? You know what? The last word. You ever look at the last word in the Old Testament? Amen. You see that word there? What's that word? Curse. What's Galatians 3.13 say? He's redeemed us from the curse of the law. Listen, everyone, listen. If you don't continue in the law, you're cursed. Amen. And Christ came to redeem us from the curse of the law because he satisfied God's requirement. He was the only one who did that. Amen. He did it. 33 and a half years, lived the perfect sinless life. He did everything that none of us could ever do. You know, what a proud thing to say. Oh, I think I'm good enough to get to heaven on my goodness. Really? You're not as good as Christ. Nobody is. We need him. If that was the case, if you could save your own soul, then God wasted his time sending his only begotten son here. Amen. The point is you can't save your own soul. Anyway, so at the end of this thing, when you read this in Malachi, in Malachi chapter 3, or 4, I'm sorry, chapter 4, watch this, verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, I've circled that, yea, and all that do wickedly, I circled that, shall be what? Stubble. What's stubble? It's an unusable part of the grain. Amen? That's not, you don't want that part. And the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the Lord of hosts. That's that 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. That's where we are in Matthew 24 when he comes back, amen? And he says this, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall neither uh, shall leave them neither root nor branch. Watch this. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness. That's a, that's a name of God. How about that? Capital S-U-N. Son of righteousness. You know that son's a picture of God the Father. How about that? Amen? How about that? Amen? The son of righteousness. Picture of God. He says, well, uh, shall rise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the soul. Watch this. And ye shall tread down the wicked. We're coming back. You read Revelation 19. Oh, we will come back with Christ on horses. Amen. He's leading the way. He takes care of everything. We're just kind of watching it all happen. He's taking care of it. And watch this. So when you have fire, what do you have? Ashes. Ashes. That's what you have. That's what you have. Not a pretty sight. Amen. That fire. That will be a fire. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in, that, in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. That's not a pretty sight at all. Can you imagine that? The soles of your feet, the hoofs of the horses, hump, stomping on the ashes of what's left over of the people of this world who hated God, didn't want God, didn't believe in God, didn't trust Christ. They rejected God. They laughed at God. They made fun at God. That's what he does at the end of that thing. Amen? Well, I'll tell you, I'm glad I'm saved. I am so glad I am saved. Man, I'll tell you. Oh, boy. Praise God for that. Amen? Amen. So anyway, this thing, this whole event of Christ's return at the revelation, that last part, these verses that we're going through in Matthew 24 from this point forward give more detail, more information. But there's people out there, like I've mentioned before, the preterists. They don't believe he came back physically. They believe he came back spiritually. Well, let me help you fix that thought up because the Bible is true. Let, every, let God be true and every man a liar. How about that? 
Acts, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. The Bible's true, amen? You know what? Jesus lived on the planet Earth for 33 and a half years. He was born in Bethlehem's manger. Amen? Much of his life is, is, is in obscurity, so to speak. We don't know much about except for 12 years of age. Amen? His birth, 12 years of age, and then 30 years. That's his public ministry. The four Gospels are all written about three and a half years. How about that? That's it of Christ. This man changed the world. He's the God-man. He's, he is God the Son, the Son of God. Amen? He changed the world. Can you imagine? People get so upset, they don't even like to say, you know, B.C., meaning it used to, for us, you know, before Christ. They say, no, we like B.C.E., before common era. We don't want to use Christ in the thing. Our calendar is based upon Christ, his birth. How do, you, how do you disregard that? Oh, this was, I don't believe in Jesus, or I don't believe in him. First of all, you, you can't deny him historically. Oh, man, I'll tell you, um, records everywhere, historical records. But you know what? I, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 says there was above 500 witnesses. Now, tell me how that would stand up in a court of law. I don't think there'd be a shadow of a doubt. For over 500 witnesses touched him, saw him. Amen? Listen, the Bible says every word would be established by two or three witnesses. How about 500 witnesses? How do you deny something like that? Well, I just don't believe. Yeah. You just don't want to believe. Don't say you can't believe. You don't want to believe. So what happens here? Here he's going to get ready to ascend. If you know anything about the book of Acts, it's an extension of the gospel of Luke. God used Luke to write Acts. Amen? And this is just a continuation on. And he says, you need to wait, Luke 24, you need to wait till you're endued with power from on high, where they were filled with the Spirit. Amen? He tells them in verse 20 and verse 8, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon, ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. He said, listen, you need to get the gospel out everywhere. Everybody needs the Lord. Amen? It doesn't matter. I don't say, well, what race are you or where are you from? What country? Are you? No, you need the Lord. Amen? You need the gospel. He says, we need to do that. You receive power for what? To be a witness. Listen, God says, I'll give you power to be a witness. Are you, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Isn't that a command in Ephesians 5, 18? Be filled with the Spirit. Not, uh, not, uh, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5, 18. He says, as much as it is wrong to be drunk with wine, it's wrong to not be filled with the Spirit of God. Yeah. So, oh, man, that's terrible. That's terrible Christians aren't filled with the Spirit. How come, uh, we need to dwell on that thought for a little while. He says, listen, I'm going to give you power. You know, not to... Tell everybody, look at me, look how great I am. No, look at Jesus. He, you need him right now. Amen? The Bible says you study this book, a book of Acts. They, they preached the word of God with boldness. Why? Because they were filled with the Spirit. They were filled with the Spirit of God. Listen, in that day of Pentecost, 3,000 were saved, baptized, and added to the church. Come on. Listen, these guys, these people, they prayed. Listen, he was 40 days on the earth. And the Bible says from the time of the Passover to Pentecost, it's 50 days. you got 10 days of people in the upper room praying. If you get 10 people, let's say we had 10 days of prayer meetings, steady, going. Everybody's together praying for 10 days. What do you think God would do? What do you think God would do? Man, I'll tell you, we'd turn up, turn the facts upside down. He said, well, we need a whole bunch of people. Not with God. Not with God. You just need people that are willing to be committed. Amen. You know what? The things that we're missing today are the old-fashioned prayer meeting. When I was reading back about good old uh, Oswald J. Smith, there was a lot more prayer meetings going on back then. Amen. Man, he used to go in the logging camps and reach people for Christ. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, what a great man of God. He's up in heaven glory. Amen. I don't know much about his son, but I know about his dad. I know about the father, Oswald. As I mentioned on Sunday, he wrote many songs. Preached, preached, man, for 60-something years. Man, there's something about that. 
Amen. It's, man, I'll tell you, we're missing that, some of that stuff here in, in our society, in our world tonight. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you. So anyway, um, he says, by the way, verse 9, and when he had spoken these things while he, they beheld, he was taken up. Cloud received them out of their sight. You say, well, what, what, what was Jesus, okay? Um, keep your place there. Man, you say, you already got me over in Matthew 24. Go to Luke 24. Keep your place in Acts 1. You know what? The Bible says here, watch this here. The Bible says in verse 36, Matthew, Luke 24, and, the, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. You know, in his glorified body, he can come and go. He, he came through uh, when the doors were closed. How about that? Well, that's impossible. That doesn't qualify under the laws of physics. Listen, God created the laws of physics. How about that? He created this earth. He spoke this world into existence. Everything that we see was spoken into existence by the word of God. Now watch this. And they were terrified and affrighted. Suppose they had seen a spirit. Verse 38, and he said unto them, why are ye troubled? Why do ye do thoughts arise in your hearts? He said, what are you troubled? Hey, that's a good one tonight too. Why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Come on, get back in the book. Ask God to help you. Keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. Pray, pray. Leave your worries and your cares to Christ. Amen? Then he says this, Behold my hands and my feet, that is, I myself, handle me. See, for a spirit hath not flesh and bone. Look, Jesus said in his glorified state he was made of flesh and bone. That's physical. <laughs> Amen? That's not a spirit. He even says, I'm, this is not a spirit. I am flesh and bone. Touch me. Feel me. I'm here. I'm alive, amen, as you have seen me. And he said, and when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Amen, boy, I'll tell you. And I, if you read the book of uh, uh, Isaiah, you see, you find, or Zechariah, it says they're wounds. They're not scarred up. They're not healed over. They're still, they're still fresh. How about that? They're wounds. They're wounds. That's what Zechariah says. That the nation of Israel will see him. There's wounds, amen. He was wounded amongst his brethren there. And then he says, so, so we know this, he's physical. He's physical, amen? So when you get to Acts chapter 1 back there, when you're looking at Jesus in verse 10, he's bodily. This is not a spirit. We've already qualified that in Luke 24. This is a continuation. Verse 11, which also said, watch well, this, two men. By the way, as he went up, behold, verse 10, two men stood by them in white apparel. What are those? Angels. Sorry, ladies. Every angel in the Bible is a man. Oh, there no gods against woman angels? No, God just defined them as males. We don't like that. Oh, I don't like that, you know. And what about touched by an angel? What about the Bible? <laughs> I know that doesn't sound very good. Some people, oh, you just upset me, you know, because you mentioned touched by an angel, and yeah, and there's women angels and all that kind of stuff. They're always men in the Bible. They're always. Some people think they're neuter. <laughs> not really. Some people think that. No, they're not. They're male. They're men. So as these two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. And you, where was he? Who knows where was he? Where was Christ when these words were set, spoken? In Acts 1. Who knows? It's not a trick question. Where, where was he in that point? Okay. Mount of Olives. Where is he coming back at the end of the tribulation? Mount of Olives. He says, the same way you see me go up, that's bodily, physically. In spite of what the preterists say, they say, oh, he came back spiritually. You know, they spiritualize all this stuff because they say Christ came back spiritually at 70 A.D., or after that, because they went through all this tribulation. They, they spiritualize all the stuff about the tribulation. They say it's all past. That's all. That's what the word preterist means, past, past. No, no, no. He came back bodily, physically. Or he's, he's going up, and he's coming back the same way. When's that? At the end of the tribulation. We're going to meet him in the air for the rapture. It's a difference. Seven years before, we meet him in the air. Every eye will not see him. 
Only those. Well, a trumpet sound. Bang. In a microsecond. Amen. Splitting of an atom. Bang. We're up there. We're with him. Amen. We're caught up together to be with him in the, in, in the air. Amen. Praise God. Well, I, can't, I wonder how that's going to feel. Amen. You ever wanted to fly? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You're going to learn how to fly really quick. Be in the presence of God in the twinkling of an eye. How about that one? Amen. Anyway, so Bible says that he's gone up physically. Amen. He's coming back physically. So this time that I mentioned in, in, Second, Thess uh, in Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and Malachi 4, it's Christ coming back bodily. And it, that's, it's not spiritually. Amen. <laughs> he's coming back bodily. Amen? So anyway, it will be Christ's return, as I've already mentioned to you in Revelation 1-7. says, every eye will see him. Every eye shall see him. That means this. Christ's return will be public and obvious to everybody. There will not be any mistake whatsoever. It will be obvious to the whole world what's going on. Something, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah, mm -hmm. this is Christ. He's coming back, amen? That didn't happen in 70 AD with the Roman army coming in with Titus to Jerusalem. That's not it. That's not it. Not even close, amen? How about that? That's uh, something else there, amen? He says, you know, about there's a bunch of times in the passage in Matthew chapter 24. Let's go back there. Let's look back there again. Amen. There's a bunch of times in the passage, watch this, that talk about the coming of the Lord. And they're all references to the time where he comes back at the end of the tribulation. Watch this. And we talked about this a long time ago. How many months ago? I don't know. I have to look back. Verse 3, and as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately. Matthew 24, verse 3, saying, tell us when all these things shall be. Uh, things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? How about that? Amen? Listen, the end of the world. The rapture's not the end of the world. When we're taken out before the church, that's not the end. That's not the end. The end's not yet there. Amen? And then what else does he say? Let's see here. In verse, um, let's see here, verse 20, 27, okay? And that's where we're at in uh, for verse uh, that's 27, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And that's the reference to every eye will see him. That's the reference that, boy, I tell you, he, man, he's just, it's going to be Christ coming back. Amen? Very clear. What else is there? Ver, uh, 27. Look at verse, uh, let's see here, 37. Verse 37. We'll be getting to that down a while later. We're not going to get to it now tonight. Watch this. In this passage, by the way, there's a comparative passage in the Gospel of Luke, in Luke 29, that mentions also the time of, 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 of Lot there. But watch this. Um, verse 37, as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen? Coming of the Son of Man be. The coming, the coming, the coming, the coming. Verse 39. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so sh uh, shall also the Son of Man Coming of the Son of Man be. Coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. Praise God. And then you skip down. I think it's verse 48. And, uh, but, and if, but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. So over and over again, the coming that's in view here is the second part of the second coming, the revelation when Christ is revealed to this whole world. Amen. Every eye, every eye will see him. Amen. Look at this. Go back to that verse 27. So he says here, so again, as we talked about before in verse 24, deception, great signs, great wonders. And people think today, oh, it's got to be of God. And I mentioned, I'm not going to go over all that. Look at the previous messages that we've looked at about verse 24. And the reality is this, the devil can duplicate. He's a counterfeiter. Amen. He's a counterfeiter. People say, oh, look at that miracle happening. And you say it's of God? You say it's of God? You better read your Bible. That's what the devil's going to do in the tribulation, the Antichrist. How about that? Amen? He's going to deceive. And that's what he's uh, talking about there. Uh, he's in the desert. Verse, oh, well, he's not going out for it. But he's in the secret. Believe it not. Yeah. And he says, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The coming of the Son of Man be. Which brings us again to this one thing. So in verse 28, 
when you read that passage of Scripture. And again, we went through all of that. It's just, this is a hard one. So, um, listen, there, there's going to be some birds amassed. You know, the Bible says there in this passage, did you see that? Verse 28, the eagles will be gathered together. That's in the Valley of Megiddo. That's the Battle of Armageddon. As a matter of fact, I think it's in, uh, let's see here, in uh, verse uh, um, Luke 17, 37. Keep your place there. Luke 17, verse 37. Luke 17, verse 37. <clears throat> and again, similar, some similarity here. It's a little different because the comparative passage of Matthew 24 is actually uh, Luke chapter 21. But in here, in Luke's gospel, he mentions some of the similar things over here in, in Luke chapter 17. And he said this in verse 37. Again, he talks about Lot's wife, as I mentioned a, few, a little bit ago in this message, verse 32, remember Lot's wife. Up at the top in verse 26, he mentions the days of Noah. In verse 28, he mentions the days of Lot, amen? And then he kind of goes down through that, uh, and he mentions Lot's wife, as we've already mentioned. And then, verse 37, they answered and said to them, Where, Lord? And he said to them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. You say, what is that? That's that reference at the end of that battle. Well, I'll tell you, there's going to be some flesh around Dead, there's going to be carcasses. That's what we just read in Matthew chapter 24. In that verse, it says, wherever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. So you say, where else is that in the Bible? I'm glad you asked. Revelation 19. Revelation chapter 19. Revelation, Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19. <clears throat> verse 11. Again, we'll go over this passage again in future lessons. Verse 11, this is the second coming of Christ. This is at the end of the tribulation. And I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called, capital F, faithful, and capital T, true. In the righteousness, in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. How about that? His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. Amen? In verse 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That's the saints of God. Amen? They're coming back with Christ. That's us. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. It kind of covers a lot of prophetic uh, events there in that passage. He treadeth out the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. You know what? People say, well, it's wrong to be angry. Not if you have righteous indignation. You know, the Bible even tells us in the book of Ephesians, uh, be angry and sin not. People don't know that verse. Listen, but it's hard for us because you see where our anger is selfish. We're selfish. A lot of it's selfishness. Amen. He says, be angry and sin not. In other words, don't sin in your anger. Amen. What kind, why, why, why are you angry? You know, um, the Bible even tells us that you can be angry with the cause. Jesus said that. We went through that back in the early part of the Gospel of Matthew. Anger with a cause. There is a reason. Amen. So anyway, so he goes down there, um, verse 16, and he hath on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, praise the Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords. Watch this. Are you ready? Here it is. This is the reference back to the carcass and the eagles. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. He cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Hmm. Wow. That's going to be a terrible time. That you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and of them that sat on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered there together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. You can't beat King Jesus, as I've already said. We know. You know what? You may, we, we may lose a battle here and there, but we know... We're on the winning side. <laughs> We're on the winning side. I like that song. Amen. I know um, Amazing Grace Baptist Church in the Valley, they have a program.
believe they're still doing it. It's called On the Winning Side. And they sing that song in the beginning of the broadcast on the radio, on AVR in the valley. On the winning side, amen? We're on the winning side. We may lose a battle here and there, but we're on the winning side. King Jesus, the captain of our salvation, the king of kings and Lord of lords, we're on the right side. Who's on the Lord's side, Moses said? Who's on the Lord's side? You're on the Lord's side, amen? If you're saved, you're on the Lord's side, amen? Praise God. You ought to live like you're on the Lord's side too. Some of God's people are not living like they should, amen? The world's looking, whose side are you on? <laughs> Do they got questions about that about you tonight? Whose side are you on? People shouldn't have to wonder or guess about whose side you're on. You're on the Lord's side. Whose side are you on? I'm on the Lord's side. Amen. So he's telling them, come, amen. Boy, I'll tell you, it's going to be a terrible, terrible, terrible time, amen. That's what that verse 28 is referring to. You know what? When you read verse 18, the word flesh is mentioned five times. Amen. Boy, I'll tell you. Wow. Amen. Then he says in verse 20, we didn't read that one. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles, amen, before him, which he, uh, and with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive in the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. This idea of annihilation, the Jehovah Witnesses teach that. Oh, you just burn up and that's it. No, no, it's everlasting fire. It's everlasting burning. Amen. You're cast alive forever and ever burning. The pain of feeling of burning, but yet never, never being consumed. How about that? That's what hell is like. Oh, I don't believe in hell. The devil believes in hell. The Bible says the devils believe and tremble. They know better than some lost people, lost people in this world. That's what James tells us. They believe and tremble. Oh, the devils. They all believe. It's sad the people in our world. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in the Bible. I don't believe in hell. I don't believe in heaven. Like I said, Luke 16, everyone in hell is a believer now. They wish people would come and witness to their loved ones. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a real mess. Amen. It's a real mess. Anyway, listen, we need to stop there. And Lord willing, we'll pick it up. In, uh, in verse 29, I believe, amen? I think it's verse 29. I think that's where we're going to leave off here. And uh, verse, uh, yeah, verse 29. Immediately after tribulation of those days, amen? So it's going to be some repetition because this is all part of that second coming. Amen, his return. Amen, we're coming with him. You've seen that, Revelation 19, amen? So anyway, let's pray and we'll, uh, we'll wrap up here. Father, again, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the truth for the Bible. Thank you, Lord. Those who are saved, we're on the winning side. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. You're our King of kings. You're our Lord of lords. God, help us. Help us, Lord God, that the world could see whose side we are on tonight. I pray the world would not have, have to guess and wonder if we're for you or against you, Lord God. God, I, we're either or. Help us tonight. Help us tonight, Lord God. We need your help tonight, Lord God. People need you more than ever, Lord God. I don't know when you're coming back. Nobody does, Lord. But God, we know you can come back tonight. You can come back at any time. Help us to be found faithful. Help us to be a witness and a testimony. Lord, you promised us power to be witnesses. God, please, Lord, help us to be those witnesses. I pray our, we would have the boldness from the Holy Spirit of God to be the witness that we ought to be. Now, Father, again, bless each and every one here tonight and those online. And again, we do pray especially for those who are lost. Help them, help them to realize this is real. This is the truth. This doesn't need any fact-checking. This is the truth tonight. God, help us, help us tonight to get that message across so people can believe on you, Lord. God, we need this. We need this tonight. So, Father, now as we get ready to pray here and later to go home, Lord God, just again, thank you for the time we've had, and we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.